Okay, would everyone please turn off cell phones or silence them at the very least, and everyone rise for a moment of silence and a pledge to the flag. remain standing, I'm sorry. Uh, Legislator Fagion, would you introduce our singer? Thank you, Chairman. At this time, I would welcome a Port Jervis High School sophomore, Regina Cregan, to come to the podium, and she's gonna sing the national anthem. Thank you very much, Regina. That was beautiful. Uh, we have three proclamations. Oh, roll call first. Benelli? Here. Paduk? Here. Amo? Here. Anagnostakis? Present. Benton? Here. Cheney? Here. Fagione? Here. Hines? Here. Kulisek? Here. Lujan? Present. Menuda? Here. O'Donnell? Here. Ruskevich? Sassy? Here. Sierra? Staganga, Sutherland, Here. Tortel, Here. Tui, Here. Vero, Here. Brescia. Here. 19 present, two absent. And I would just say that Legislator Ruskevich is at an important um, Senate hearing at Sullivan County Community College on behalf of the Vegetable Growers Association, which he's the president of, on the very important subject of overtime for farm workers. Okay, first we have three proclamations. I'd like to invite up the family of legislator, former legislator James Wright, who unfortunately passed away on March 5th of this year. Um, I'd like to invite up Dora and Mary Ellen and Jack. Dora and family, I'd like to uh, present you with this proclamation on behalf of James. Jim was a, a good friend of mine when I first came to the legislature. Everybody knows how w well he did his homework, and he said, you know, I saw at the, the wake that he saved every uh, newspaper article, and that was probably just a small sampling of what he did. But uh, he was instrumental with the Stewart Airport Commission and so much in the legislature. I remember when he sat kind of diagonally across from where I sat in the old chamber, but he was a wealth of knowledge, and, and we certainly miss him, and we thank you gives me a great honor to present you with this proclamation to Jim. Resolution of the Legislature of the County of Orange, 
honoring the memory of James C. Wright, outstanding citizen, dedicated public servant, veteran, businessman, and former county legislator for the 11th District. Whereas it is fitting and appropriate to recognize the career and life of an outstanding citizen, dedicated public servant, veteran, and respected colleague at this re regular meeting of the Orange County Legislature. <clears throat> Whereas James C. Wright began his first term as a legislator on January 1st, 1970 in the new charter form of government, which replaced the 37 member board of supervisors with an elected county executive and legislature of 21 members. He served until his retirement in 1997 during his tenure, he was Majority Leader, served on the Physical Services Committee, Personnel and Compensation and Finance and administrator, excuse me, Administration Committees. And he was Chairman of the Rules Enactment and Intergovernment, just say the Rules Committee. <laughs> he influenced every important public policy decision made during his legislative career. He was proactive in the creation of the Orange County Enhanced 911 system and was appointed to the Stewart Airport Commission where he served as Chairman from 1983 to 2016. And whereas James C. Wright served in the U.S. Army as a fire detection specialist with the 1st Infantry Division patrolling the Germans Czechoslovakian border, he eventually started his own business, the Wright Employment Agency, in 1959 as a self-employed businessman. He was an act active in many business, civic, and community organizations and served in various capacities with the Eastern Orange County Chamber of Commerce the Newburgh Businessmen's Association, the JCs, the Kiwanis Club of Newburgh, the Orange County IDA, and the Foreign Trade Zone Management Zone. Whereas James C. Wright demonstrates that love of his family and community and a personal conviction to work hard, to work hard and strive for excellence are key to a life of fulfillment. And whereas James C. Wright's service to the County of Orange is most deeply appreciated, now therefore it is hereby resolved that we, the Orange County Legislature, do hereby formally memorialize our profound sentiments on the occasion of the passing of James C. Wright on behalf of ourselves and all the people of the County of Orange to whose interests and service we are so dedicated. <laughs> Almost done, sorry, I'm out of breath here, Dora. <laughs> it is further resolved that this resolution be spread upon the records of this body as a permanent memorial and an enduring standard for its members and for all its citizens, adopted by the Orange County Legislature on May 2nd, 2019. You want to say a few words? On behalf of our family, I would like to thank the legislature and the county residents for all the acknowledgement of his death and, and notes of comfort and prayers they send us. So thank you all very much. Thank you again, Dora. Can I get a picture? Oh, Joe Minuti, you want to say a couple words? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, on a personal note, Jim was very instrumental uh, for me as a young man, um, an American, true American of who he was, and uh, rules, regulations of being a committee person. Uh, he was instrumental in my life, and I just wanted to extend my condolences and, and great thanks to him and our community for New Windsor. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you, Joe. Mary Ellen, you want to say anything? Or? Mary Ellen was a coroner many, many years ago, too, for the County of Orange, a very accomplished family. And Jack was a good friend of mine from Newburgh Yacht Club, too. Good sailor, good boatsman, right? We do have a little fun when we're not busy doing other Yes, you do. I, I've seen that. <laughs> but thanks for coming in, and, and we'll, his memory will live on for a long time. Yeah, I know. It's hot in here, Dora. It's hot. It's hot. I'm always out of breath. I've got to lose weight again. Okay, Harry, Deputy, or Acting County Exec, Harry Poor, you want to come up to do this presentation? And DSS, Senior Case Supervisor, Debbie Pasola, and Foster Care Adoption Services, all the, the people that are involved. <laughs> You know, our, our Department of Social Services has uh, a lot of responsibilities, and uh, most of them are dealing with a lot of tragedy and a lot of uh, difficulty. And, and, but there are these other moments that are uh, really uh, uh, quite wonderful. And uh, over the years, uh, many years, uh, I've gotten to know the people who work with the uh, grandparents foster care program and foster care in general. And uh, there are those moments where you do something that makes the quality of life for our young people who are without the kinds of support that most of us enjoyed as we grew up, you make their lives better. And uh, this month is the, um, do you have the proclamation? 
to see. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Uh, but it's May is Forced Apparent Month, and it's just a great way for us as county uh, officials to let the rest of the world know that foster care is an extremely important service, and it can mean so much to so many people. So I'd like to read this. Uh, whereas May has been designated Forced Apparent Month in Orange County, and whereas the youth of this county, state, and nation are our most precious resource and hope for the future, all children deserve a caring and nurturing home so that they may teach their full, reach their full uh, potential. And whereas the people of Orange County are compassionate and have a long-standing tradition of opening their hearts and homes to children in need of the stable and permanent setting, and whereas forced to parents, through their love, guidance, uh, nurturance, dedicated service, provide children the care and supervision they need to see them through difficult times allowing them to continue to grow and develop until a permanent family life can be assured. And whereas Orange County has 218 foster families, providing care for 203 Orange County children, whereas it is important to recognize the invaluable contribution foster parents make to the children of Orange County by so many willing to give their home time and devotion to improving these children's quality of life. Uh, now, therefore, it may resolve that I, uh, on behalf of Stephen M. Newhouse, Orange County Executive, and Stephen L. L. Stephen Brush, the Chairman of the Legislature, do hereby proclaim May 2019 as Foster Parent Month in Orange County and urge all Orange County citizens to affirm their support and to recognize the importance of foster parents. Very valuable service. Thank you all, foster parents, for what you do. You want to say something? You want to say anything? Or? Yes, I'm so. Hello, I am Debbie Pasola, and I oversee the foster care adoption, home finding, and preventive programs for Orange County. Orange County, um, as Harry stated, May is Foster Parent Month, and we're here to celebrate what our wonderful foster families do for us um, and some of the most vulnerable children in our community every day throughout the year. Um, I'd like to say some other thank yous, um, first to the County Executive's Office for their support, as well as the Legislature for their support and the proclamation, and also for allowing us time on the busy agenda um, and joining us once again to publicly thank our foster parents. Um, Commissioner Darcy Miller also wished to be here um, with us today, but had to be out of town. Um, on behalf of herself and all of the staff at Orange County DSS, she extends her great appreciation and sincere thanks to our foster parents um, who are being honored here today. Um, last, thank you to the Home Finding Unit who works to recruit, train, certify, recertify, and most importantly, support our foster parents every day. Um, with us today is the entire um, Home Finding Unit, um, Supervisor Beth Van Pelt, um, Home Finders Matt Sheridan, Elaine Smith, Paige Raspoli, and I'm not sure, Georgia McKenna and Deneen Cooper are not here, okay. Um, and now on to our awards. Um, for the past two years, we've honored a group of foster parents at the legislative se session during the month of May. Um, in recent years, we have recognized foster parents for longevity, um, for an incredible 25 years of service. <laughs> this year, we don't have any foster parents reaching that milestone, so we instead are honoring, um, awarding Golden Heart Awards for exemplary service. It wasn't difficult to select the category um, because as you will hear, some of our foster parents have done extraordinary things this year. Their selfless acts and caring for medically fragile children leave me truly in awe. We wish to thank those foster parents who are new to us and also welcome them to the ranks of a very select group of foster parents who have cared for medically vulnerable children for many, many years who we are also here to honor. Okay. First up, we have Ali Levy and Ian Dahl. And you can join us up here if you'd like, with whoever you'd like. Um, Ali and Ian have been foster parents with us for about a year and a half and have fostered four children during that time, two of whom have significant medical needs. This family was motivated to become foster parents from their own experience as parents of two children, one of whom has complex medical issues. From that experience, they came to us seeking to foster medically fragile children because they were aware that there are likely few families who would do so. They were right. Um, in fact, I think they're all sitting in this room. The family, um, this family has embraced whatever is needed to care for the children in their care, including bringing the children to frequent doctor's appointments with specialists, often located in Westchester County, working with nurses, service providers, and the caseworkers who visit their home. The second child to be placed, placed with this family has had been hospitalized prior to placement and was diagnosed with failure to thrive. 
The family has visited him almost daily while he was in the hospital until he was healthy enough to be discharged to their home. We can't tell you how much we appreciate this family stepping forward to care for children in foster care who have special needs, and we look forward to having them on our team for many years to come. Allie and Ian, you have golden hearts. Unfortunately, not all of our um, foster parents who we are honoring could be with us today, but um, I wanted to um, let you know who they are and, and share a little bit of their stories. Um, we also have Irvin and Pamela D'Souza. Um, Irvin and Pamela have been foster parents for just a year. They came to us seeking to help. They did not specifically say that they would be interested in caring for children with special medical needs, but they were willing to help in any way they could. They got their feet wet slowly, having done a few respites for a sibling group of three girls during their first year with us. More recently, we called them asking them to consider emergency <clears throat> foster care placement of a wheelchair-bound girl. They stepped up initially to provide care until we could locate a longer-term pl placement. But then things changed. Upon learning that an alternate placement was found, but it was located several hours away, they expressed their commitment to continue providing a loving home and support for this child. They had quickly fallen in love with this little girl who, in addition to being wheelchair bound, has very significant medical and developmental needs. To care for her, the DeSouza's have literally had to modify their home and their entire lives to make this little girl part of their family. They advocate for her and make sure she is involved in community activities such as the Special Olympics. Irvin and Pamela have provided excellent care for this child and also frequently expressed concern for her father, wanting to make sure he receives the services he needs as well. Irvin and Pam D'Souza have golden hearts. This one's a little longer, but it'll be worth it, I promise. Um, Shannon Dittbrenner. I think the best way I can tell Shannon's story is in her own words with experts taken from a thank you note she sent to our office in January 2019. To everyone at Orange County office, I must first just start by saying thank you to every single person in that office for the wonderful card and donation you have given me. You have no idea how amazing that was and how deep it hit me. I would just like to take a second of your time and introduce myself to some of you who may not have known me but decided to contribute to that beautiful card. I started my foster mommy journey several years ago. I am a registered nurse for New York State Office of De People with Developmental Disabilities. I was sitting in on a meeting that was about to start when I heard a Medicaid service coordinator from an outside agency talking on the phone with someone. She was talking about a little boy, six months old, that had a feeding tube and how she didn't know of anyone to take him. I immediately said to her, I will take him. She got instantly very excited and asked if I was a foster parent. I informed her that I was not, but I would take him anyway. She laughed and said, no, you'd have to be a certified foster parent. She then proceeded to tell me it is hard enough to place children into foster homes, but medically fragile children are even harder. The meeting ended and that was it. After that meeting, for months, occasionally, I thought about that little boy and wondered what had happened to him. I thought about how she stated there are many children that needed homes and that many medical children needed placement, but no one wants to deal with these types of children. This meeting changed my life entirely. After about four to five months of thinking about this child who I had never met or even knew his name, I investigated becoming a foster mommy. That's how Shannon's journey started with us. Fast forward to last year, and her note continues from sep September 2018. I received a call from the placement coordinator in your office, and I was introduced to the most amazing child I've ever met. She was two months old, just had open heart surgery, and has had nobody to hold her and or visiting her. I asked him if I didn't take her, what would happen? If I did not take her, she would end up in a children's long-term facility. Not on my watch, no way. From the very first day I met her, there was something about her that I can, still cannot explain. She has had several heart surgeries and has continued to fight to live. I visited her weekly, sometimes four times a week, especially now that she is getting older. She needs even more interaction. She knows when I walk in and call her stinky butt and gives me a huge all gum smile that I'm there for her. I've been working with her to reach for things and I try to have her engage with me the entire time I'm there. She has had struggles since the day she was born and has seemed to fight so hard and has overcome everything she is given. Her fight is nowhere near over as she is still in the hospital, but she continues to amaze everyone. 
On January 11th, 2019, she went into, in for another heart surgery. This was a big one. Most open heart surgeries are a minimum of eight hours. I called to check on her status and the doctor stated to me that she did great in surgery. However, we are working on resuscitating her now. I immediately drove to her and cried for her, held her hand as they struggled for hours to keep this angel alive. At, the, at one point, the doctors looked at me and said, there's nothing else we can do for her and you may want to start saying your goodbyes. I have never in my life heard those words and couldn't believe it. I sat next to her, whispered in her ear, telling her I loved her and that there was nothing she needed to be afraid of. I apologized to her for everything she has gone through in her life and I told her repeatedly that we loved her. Excuse me. They couldn't give her anything else and for the next hour I sat next to her holding her hands, rubbing her face and explaining to her that she has changed my life forever and that I loved her very much. After approximately another hour, the doctor said to me, honestly, this little girl is the most amazing fighter. She had stabled out and was showing great improvement. We were all amazed and happy. She continues to have her ups and downs and remains in the hospital today. However, her will to survive is something I've never seen. Every day I'm blessed to have this child in my life and she has touched my heart and soul more than I can ever explain. Being a foster mommy has shown me just how big and hard I can love a child even when they are not biologically mine. I'm writing this to everyone in your office to explain that I need to say thank you to each and every one of you for allowing these children to come into my home. When I read the card and received the donation, I literally sat and cried. I have never received anything like this, and especially at such a time of need, I want to say thank you all, and I mean this with all my heart. She's thanking us. <laughs> um, Shannon didn't mention two things. Um, one is the birth parents. The night we thought the child would pass away, we got the birth parents to the hospital, as we should. Shannon graciously, graciously shared her moments of grief with them and understood and accepted the need to defer to their decisions. The other thing Shannon didn't mention is that she's received no compensation as a foster parent for this child because the child she loves so much has never left the hospital to be able to be placed in her home. The staff at DSS have been so moved by her devotion that a donation was taken up to assist her with expenses after the child she loves so dearly nearly passed away in January. There is an update. While the child is still in the hospital, her birth parents, recognizing that they will never be able to meet her needs and having met and spent time with this extraordinary person who loves their child so dearly, have surrendered her for adoption. Shannon is now in the process of adopting a child who may never leave the hospital, but who will always have a family. Shannon Dip Brenner has a golden heart. Now for our seasoned foster parents, um, Victoria and Patsy Monaco, and um, Pat is here and you're welcome to come up and bring whoever you'd like. Um, the Monacos have been foster parents since June 1996, that's almost 23 years. They have fostered upwards of 65 children and adopted, I, I lost count, nine or 10. Maybe you lost count too, 11, that would be really <laughs> lost count. <laughs> okay, Vicki um, has also worked as a nurse um, over the years, the Monacos have come to specialize in caring for children with medical needs. This family has experience working with children with some of the most significant medical and developmental needs and issues including head trauma. And they are experts at caring for children who have sustained brain injuries due to shaken baby syndrome. They have sat bedside for days on end when one of their children in their care required a liver transplant. In addition to the many children this family has welcomed into their home, they have also welcomed many, many caseworkers and service providers. To give you a glimpse of their lives, they, are also, they also have medical personnel in their home on a daily basis to assist in the care of the children. Vicki has offered to share her knowledge on brain injury with others and is a great advocate for all of the children in, her, in their home. The Monacos have modified their home and given up themselves in endless other ways to ensure the safety and comfort of their adopted and foster children. Amazingly, four of the children the Monacos adopted, who all require extensive medical care, would most likely live in a medical facility were it not for the care provided by Vicki and Pat Monaco. Vicki and Pat Monaco have golden hearts. standing there has had a liver transplant when she was three years old. I'm done. Thank you so much. 
Okay, last but never least, Davina Henry. Um, come on up with whoever you'd like to bring with you. Um, Davina has been a foster parent with us since April of 1998, that's 21 years. During that time, she has fostered over 100 children, uh, I did say 100, including those she has adopted. Throughout the years, Davina has fostered children with many different medical needs. She specializes in caring for medically fragile infants, including babies who were born addicted and are going through withdrawal symptoms. As if caring for a newborn wasn't difficult enough, imagine the stamina and dedication needed to care for newborns experiencing withdrawal over and over again. Davina is truly our go-to foster parent to care for and stabilize newborns with all kinds of medical problems right out of the hospital. And she might have brought one with her today. <laughs> um, she also assists other foster parents as well as birth parents in learning to care for these very fragile babies. I can't overemphasize the importance of assisting birth parents and our thanks to her for that as well. Davina is also very resourceful in accessing doctors and service providers for whatever the child's needs may be. She is also a tremendous advocate for the children in her care. Davina, we truly don't know where we would be without you. Thank you for always saying yes, and thank you for your years of service caring for a truly countless number of children in Orange County with special needs. Davina, you have a golden heart. I couldn't do this without my village, as I call it. I have three adult, well, three adult daughters that I birthed and I've adopted. I adopted my sixth child last week. The one that's running around with the yellow, making all the noise. <laughs> and this is his sibling that I'm currently fostering. Um, just, it takes a village and you gotta work with the parents. If you don't work with the parents, it never works. In a positive way, right? Yes. <laughs> anyway, I'll give it back to the chairman. Debbie, on behalf of the legislature, we, we certainly thank you and all the caseworkers. You're the senior caseworker. And uh, all the families, uh, they definitely have golden hearts. Uh, it's amazing, especially uh, the, the children with special needs. Um, so I don't remember any kind of presentation like this before, before the legislature. Um, but on behalf of all of us, thank you so much for all the families do. You really give these, these children and young adults uh, a safe place to live and, and a warm family. So thank you again. We appreciate it. Okay, we've got eight speakers before the, um, the agenda. We'll just wait a couple minutes till uh, everybody gets a chance to Recognize that uh, Acting County Exec Harry Porter is here, as we know, and uh, Dan Bloomer, Director of Operations and Cost Control, and I see Lucy Joyce from Cornell Cooperative Extension is out there as well, and Langdon Chapman, County County Attorney, and Bob Co Conflitti from the uh, District Attorney's Office. Eric, oh Eric, I'm um, from Real Property too. I'm sorry, Acting uh, Commissioner. 
Was it David Church from Planning? Okay. And Lawrence Ledoux from Valley View. Did I miss anybody else? It's Steve Montgomery, Brush of Montgomery, New York. Okay, first speaker, Michael Sussman, with respect to Valley View, agenda item number 17. Turn it on, Michael, please. As I started saying, I think we're all very moved by what we just saw, and I congratulate the legislators for inviting that group here and for attending to them. Valley View is a county department. Prior litigation conclusively established this. As such, its residents and staff have the right to access other county departments as needed under the county charter. The county does not charge any other departments for the time, legal finance, and other county departments spend on their issues. The same practice should apply to Valley View. The funds set aside for Valley View should be reserved for the needs of its residents, not used to supplement the county expenditures for other funded departments. Doing so ultimately diminishes the quantum of funds available to Valley View residents. I'm particularly concerned that the county retroactively draw down money, which has no precedent in our county or elsewhere in the state. Valley View should not be subsidizing other county departments and should not be treated as a pariah differently from other departments. From my own observations during numerous visits to Valley View and from what residents have told me, the resources now being expended at Valley View for residents are increasingly inadequate. We did not fight hard to retain our county nursing home so the county could scrimp on necessities for residents while diverting money for their use to other county departments, which this legislature has adequately and fully funded. Meals and programs need to be enhanced at Valley View. Staffing levels need to be augmented. We need to ensure that the facility well represents us and does us proud. I believe that no money should be raided from those reserved for Valley View, and that if the county is the guardian of monies reserved for the facility, as it is, we should prudently use these funds to enhance it. I also oppose the use of the Valley View Reserve Fund for capital projects relating to the facility. Favorable interest rates make bonding capital projects a prudent path, and the resources of the Valley View Fund should not be used for capital expenditures. Again, this is not their contemplated or expected use, and Valley View as a county department should be treated like one for capital budget purposes as well as operating budget. Please recognize, ladies and gentlemen, that Valley View is one of our county's core institutions. We have a strong fiduciary and moral duty to those who reside there to be the best we can be, not see it as a profit center for funding other county departments. Thank you. Next speaker is Kate Almaty. Correct me when you come up, please, because on, on agenda item number 13, Hudson Valley Community Preservation Act. Honorable legislators and uh, fellow citizens, can you hear me? <clears throat> In the interest of transparency, I belong to various environmental groups, but I am speaking for myself for the Hudson Valley Community Preservation Act of, nine, of 2007. It's been a long 12 years since we have had this opportunity in 2007. During this time, change has accelerated in my area of the county. Have any of you traveled through the Harriman intersection area recently? Just the thought of doing so sends my stomach roiling and my thoughts repeating, don't miss that exit again and have to turn at, around at the top of the Bear Mountain exit again. Going down, passing the Bear Mountain parking area, having missed the exit again, I remember all the years when we always stopped there for a long time to enjoy the view of Central Valley the beautiful Central Valley. Yes, our beautiful mountains and valleys are land 
wildlife, waters, and air. In 2007, this body passed the Hudson Valley Community Preservation Act twice, sending home rule requests to the state legislature to include Orange County as a designated community. But it was stopped at the state Senate. As a result, Orange County lost its opportunity to participate. Lone Warwick has developed its own program. It is my understanding that a reason for the county's exclusion was concern for home rule. I appreciate concern for home rule. However, local municipalities only join by refer referendum. No municipality participates unless its citizens so vote. It is an option, what is called a local opt-in program by the state. Each municipality needs to decide, based on voting, whether they would opt in to this program. If I may quote from the discussion at that time, only one of the speakers still being here in office. Chairman Leahy added that every town is free to have their own home rule message and guidelines, as Warwick did. He clarified that the amount of real estate transfer tax is up to 2% from the law, and Warwick is doing one half percent. Legislator Amo said that it will be up to the local leaders and the people of each municipality. Finally, Legislator Townsend, a co-sponsor, stated that the people will have the power to vote on this issue. The power should be given to the people. Please vote to include this um, community, Hudson Valley Community Preservation Act and to vote for this opportunity so that each municipality can try to preserve our beautiful Central Valleys. Please provide this opportunity for us. And thanks to all of you, you who have sponsored this act so far. Lorraine McNeil, agenda item number 17. I almost thought they were on the top of my head at first. And I used to make fun of my mother for that. Okay, just bear with me for a moment. That's because I didn't start yet. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and honorable members of the legislature. Thank you so much for your time today. I want to talk to you about item number 17 in regards to Valley View and the uh, uh, cap uh, cost uh, accumulation. What is it? Allocation plan, excuse me. Okay. And I have a question. When is $1.5 million, and I'm using an estimate because I don't feel like saying $1,581,162 every single time. So when is 1.5 million, not 1.5 million? When you try to use it twice with two opposing accounting methods, the countywide federal in indirect cost plan or the cost allocation plan presented in the Maximus Report for Orange County is basically a, supposed to be a standardized plan for use by counties or other municipalities to receive federal dollars or awards. This goes under the Code of Federal Regulations 2 CFR Part 200. Um, after 2000, 2014, use allowance or a direct accounting method was replaced by the depreciation method to receive and recover these costs to counties. So under Title II, Code of Federal Regulations, Part 200, and also the generally accepted go governmental audit standards, or GAGAs, you are not permitted to use direct and indirect together, and you're not supposed to be using the same sun twice and go retroactively. The language in the agenda is somewhat disturbing because it basically, in well, let me read it first. A resolution making supplemental appropriation to the 2018 county budget for the Valley View Center for nursing care and rehabilitation for the 1.5 million. It sounds like basically that you're taking a line item out of the Valley View budget and putting it into the general fund for the county. This language is disturbing for a number of reasons because A, it was not explained to the people, especially the residents of Valley View and has caused them undue stress 
And also, it does not go to the transparency that we expect from our county government today. This lack of communication has, like I said, caused undue stress and is not what we expect. We do look forward to you considering my comments and others here today before you vote on this issue. We do hope that we will have information available to the public in the future. For example, posting the Maximus report or any other cost allocation plan or other things that you're seriously considering, have them available on the website so the public can understand what's going on. Thank you very much for your time today and I do hope you reconsider. Thank you. Next speaker, Virginia Scott, agenda item number 17 as well. Thank you and um, good, eve good afternoon everyone. My day is going faster than I'm expecting. Um, we just watched us honor our most vulnerable, our children. Well, let's talk about the other end of the spectrum, the elderly. I've sat in these committee meetings and um, what was just commented about transparency, I attend the committee meetings. There's only one piece of paper. There's always supplemental information. You could actually see, you know, the line items where the money is going. Um, the last time there were minutes for this committee was January. We talk about transparency. And I have spoken about this before. I printed this from the website. There are only four committees, including boards, of all the boards and the committees that are actually up to date for the public. I want to comment about this, but as a citizen, I have nothing to read. I have friends who have family members in Valley View. They're scared. And we want transparency because I know you all care about people. Well then, give us the information. And my last point, and, and again, because I don't have all the information, this, there's 94% occupancy in Valley View. 94%. And we know with our aging population, it's only going to become more. My family is gone, my parents are gone, and I think about you. Some of you have a mother, a father, a brother, a sister. They're gonna be in this boat. And I expect my tax dollars to help people are most vulnerable, especially with dignity the rest of their lives. And I'll go to this one thing, to take money out. I know Mr. Hines and Mr. Cheney, Legislator Cheney, Legislator Hines, we had a conversation about the, the bridge, the Lowtown Bridge, and we were talking how money was being taken out of that account and moved to other projects. Is, and we talked about, like, that shouldn't, be, that shouldn't be happening, and it shouldn't be happening here for Valley View either. Our county jail, they're being reimbursed from ICE for the, for the work that they're doing in helping our federal government. Why aren't you using that money? Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Mary Ann McDonough, number 17 on the agenda. Good afternoon. I'm here to speak on Orange County's new plan called the Reverse Robin Hood Plan. Take from the poor and give to the rich. First, I need three minutes, I need more, but I'll take three minutes, to explain the latest and greatest scheme to eventually sell close Valley View. Their history first. Former County Executive Diana, it will cost $30 million a year. Secondly, the LDC plan with a legal 12 rather than 14 votes of the Orange County Legislature. And lastly, before that, right after that happened, the fact that Valley View became so valuable after Bill Pascicello was removed, it needs to be sold to bail out the rest of the county and balance the budget. No, this is a complete new one that is predicated on draining the enterprise fund. Yes, that's the same fund the county finance, county budget, and two county executives could never seem to find for years. It took till 2017 from 2013 to the county to admit it existed and how much was even in it. So here's how the scheme works. As the money in the enterprise fund can only be used for Valley View, the county began in the 2019 budget, which is not passed yet, charging Valley View 1.5 million for county services. All other county departments receive these same services, budget, legal, et cetera, at no cost. When I asked Valley View Administrator Lawrence Ledoux at a 4119 Valley View Family Council meeting why, Mr. Ledoux responded Valley View had the money and all other county departments did not. 
Well, this is egregious enough. It got worse on 4-16-19. Item number three on the health and mental health agenda, requested Valley View also pay for services received during 2018. That's right, that's what this obscure language means that they read before. That's what's being voted on today by this legislative body. This planned retroactive robbery of the Valley View Fund while Valley View continues to operate on a shoestring budget. Valley View family members are consistently told laundry services cannot be returned to Valley View, more staff cannot be hired, weekly activities scheduled cannot even be printed, and ginger ale is not distributed unless you have a medical condition. Please keep in mind, Valley View is the only county department, to my knowledge, that does not cost the county any local taxation dollars. And what will happen when this Valley View Enterprise Fund is exhausted? We will hear the same old tune being played. The county should not be in the nursing home business. It's too expensive. So I ask, as I have in the past, who wants this land in the buildings that two county executives and many Republican legislators were willing to hire a company that ran Valley View into the ground, and the same decision makers refused to testify under oath, and this many of the Republican legislators on this board right now agreed with that, that they didn't have to testify. I say, stop the shenanigans that I've heard many people call this, including this most recent one. Treat Valley View and its residents and families and employees with the same respect you treat every other county department. Once again, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. You have and will do anything to advance the agenda of whoever wants Valley View. How about a drastic change to advance the agenda of the citizens of Orange County who now reside in Valley View and others who may one day need those services? And just as a post, after all, Steve Newhouse in his state of the county gave a glowing report of Orange County's finances from its sales tax revenue to its booming economic development projects. Why steal over three million from Valley View when the county does not need it and Valley View may one day need have to use it just to survive another onslaught from those who are intent of closing and selling this prize facility? Vote no on item 17. Next speaker, Phil W. Johnson, uh, agenda item number 16. Good afternoon. I am Philip Johnson, fourth generation dairy farm, town of Goshen. I'm here to address the issue of uh, the DEC requiring us to remove tires from our dairy farms, which kind of broadsided us along with several other items in the last year. Uh, we are just about on the end, end, the end of our rope, and um, there's uh, item 16 is the appropriation of $75,000, which will simply replace uh, money that the Soil and Water Conservation District took from the state to pay for covers for these silos. Um, if there's any questions to this, I'd like to take the remaining of my three minutes and try to answer them right here. This is kind of unorthodox. Are there any questions of Mr. Johnson? No, I'd like to see this continue. passed. It would help us out very much. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Okay, next speaker, uh, Susan Cleaver, agenda item number three. Hi, thank you for having this on the agenda. I'm here about the Hudson Valley Community Preservation Act. Um, a couple of things, and you probably, I don't want to bore you guys to death, but um, I've seen um, where we lose um, 175 of American farm and ranch land acres every hour. So think about that. Every hour for while you're here today, God knows how many acres are we're gonna, to me that's just ungodly. <laughs> I mean, what's going on here? And um, then I have another study that I got that said from 1987 to 2001, we lost in the Hudson Valley 20% of acreage for farms, 20%. Now, that was 18 years ago. What do you think that number is today? It's pretty high. I have a farm in Goshen, Banbury Cross Farm. My farm's up for sale because they're putting an intense development across the street from it, and I just can't see how I could do it. I support myself, I pay my taxes. Um, it's not a question of being broke, it's a question of not being able to operate with density like that. Almost all my neighbors' farms are for sale. So you've got a big block of land that's gonna be going up. Do I wanna see it? Did I ever think I'd be selling the family farm? No, not in a million years. So I think it's really important that this act gets passed. Now I wanna switch gears and, um, boy, I just feel like I have to say this, and I'm sorry. 
But I've seen on the news where there are, are all these religious places that are getting bombed. I've also seen a lot of groups that have come into the area. If you turn on the news, you see, well, they're expanding this or they're expanding that. And people are upset. And I think the reason, at least in my opinion, why people are upset is because it's exclusionary. They, they don't welcome people into the community. It's a closed community. And I don't think this is healthy. I don't think this is the United States of America. This is not where you live over here, you live over there, and nobody else can come in. That's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be all races, all colors, everybody together, and we learn from one another, and we have tolerance for one, an one another. We don't sit there and set bombs off at where you're gonna worship, and we need people to lead us. You guys. <laughs> so I'm throwing the ball at you and asking you, please, I know this is a small step, but at least pass this act. Throw the ball into the municipalities and say it's home rule. You guys know your community, and you can at least change things, add to things, and preserve what you have. Um, things that, to me, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm getting older, but it seems to me that things are just nuts now. We're bombing people. What is the matter with people, you know? Let's try and do a change here. Be proactive. And anyway, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And those guys were awesome that were here with the kids. It was good Great. to see. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Jeremy Schneider on Valley View. Number 17. Uh, correction, I'm speaking about the Hudson Valley Community Preservation Act. Okay, it said VV, so that's all right. Number three you're gonna speak on. Okay, not a problem. Thank you, uh, my name is Jeremy Schneider and I'm here on behalf of the Orange County Land Trust uh, to voice our support for the resolution to include Orange County as a designated community within the Hudson Valley Community Preservation Act of 2017. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay. Uh, Majority Leader Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I respectfully ask that we vote collectively on item, agenda item numbers 11 through 14 and 19 through 21. Okay, if there's no objections, that'll be done. Thank you. Are there any referrals, consents, or withdrawals? Okay. No, no, we're okay on that now. We're okay on number three, staying where it's at. Okay, agenda item number 16 has been replaced and is on your desk, in case you didn't notice. Okay, agenda item number one. Chairman Brush, a resolution of the legislature of the County of Orange honoring the memory of James C. Wright, outstanding citizen, dedicated public servant, veteran, businessman, and former county legislator for the 11th Legislative District. Discussion? Majority of the all Republicans added? Please. All Democrats added? Michael Amo, Independence, and um, Mike Agnostakis as well. Thank you. Appreciate that. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, yes. Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Sassy, Sierra, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 19 eyes. Thank you. And once again, Dora, Jack, Mary Ellen, thanks for coming in today. I appreciate it. Okay, number two. Legislators Cheney, Amo, and Hines. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature adopting the 2019 update and new supplement, new chapter six, transportation to the Orange County Comprehensive Master Plan for, the, for Orange County pursuant to section 9.02 of the Orange County Administrative Code. Second. Discussion? Yes, Legislator Fagione added, or do you wanna speak? Speak. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I would like to be added to this as well. Uh, just uh, wanted to thank the uh, planning department Commissioner David Church for his efforts uh, on this resolution and these matters. Uh, the update to the comprehensive plan, including the supplemental chapter six involving transportation was quite an undertaking and his staff uh, developed a great plan. And I also wanna thank the public here in Orange County. We held one public hearing, I wanna thank our staff and so many other people for making that happen. We had one public hearing held over the span of two days, one in Newburgh on February 27th and then one here on March 20th, open to the public, and we had great public participation, uh, polite public participation, 
and uh, the, the comments were noted and added uh, to, the, to the record. And I just want to thank everyone who took part in that. And I ask that uh, everyone consider this and uh, find a way to vote yes on this. Thank you, Chairman. OK, further discussion? Uh, Legislator Sierra and then Legislator Lair Lujan and then Totel. You want to be added? OK, Lori, added? Added to, OK. And thank you, Rules Chairman Fagion, for running two great hearings. OK, roll call. Benelli? Yes. The Duke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagion? Yes. Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Sassy? Sierra? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 19 ayes. OK, number three. Legislators Hines and Cheney, resolution of the Orange County Legislature pursuant to New York State Constitution Article 9 and Municipal Home Rule Law Section 40, sending a home rule request to the New York State Legislature in support of legislation amending general municipal law and the tax law in relation to including the County of Orange within the definition of a designated community under the Hudson Valley Community Preservation Act of 2007. Discussion? Okay, AMO added, the Duke added. Bureau, Sutherland, uh, Minuta, Tui, Lujan, and Benelli. Uh, Hines wants, you want, okay, Legislator Hines wants to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it was uh, about eight months ago, maybe longer, that Ms. Amati contacted me and told me that she was interested in reviving this uh, from back in 2007. And, with all due respect, I didn't know what she was talking about because I didn't get here till 2010. And uh, so I asked Legislative Council Antoinette Reed, you know, what is this all about? And she researched it, got it back to me, and uh, then it went to, uh, I guess the Green Committee jumped on it with Legislator Staganga, and here we are with this resolution ready to go, and I hope everybody supports it. Thank you. On the Planning Department. Okay, I don't want to brag, but I think I initiated this coming back, didn't I? Yes, Barry. Just, just a, a, a brief comment. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I didn't. I, I, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm confusing it with 16. Sorry. Go ahead, Barry. Um, just a brief comment. Uh, I've seen firsthand what this has done as a legislator from Warwick and having lived there for 40 years. Um, it's been a, a, a real game changer in Warwick. It's it's uh, kept the valley uh, beautiful, and I would hope all my legislators uh, support this. Thank you. Yeah, Legislator Luan. Thank you, just a brief comment. Um, I also had the pleasure of talking about this uh, at the Green Committee, and uh, we did pass it unanimously. I hope that the, the legislature will do the same, and um, I was very happy to hear the, the great things that are going on in Warwick as well. So I hope that the legislature will do the same. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Thank you, Commissioner Church, too, as well. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Oh, we're, all right, you made it after all, huh? All right, we're on number three, the perfect timing. You're the last speaker. Step up, <laughs> or make a seat, I mean. <laughs> you need to catch a breath like me, you know, you're up to okay. All right, sorry for being late. Um, I'm in the middle of taking some classes and I got stuck late. Um, anyway, this, um, I, I wanna actually ask if everybody can support this. It's a benefit for all of our municipalities. It gives them the opportunity to skip at least one step of a three-step process and allows each one of those municipalities to um, make the decision on whether they would like to try and implement this um, and they would still have to go through the process of doing a plan, holding public hearings, and putting it out to referendum in their particular communities. Um, so if everybody could um, vote in favor, it, I would appreciate it. And I know that some of our municipalities would also appreciate it because they're in the process of trying to implement this um, particular, um, sorry, I'm losing my voice, um, this particular 
Resolution. Resolution, yes, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit flustered. <laughs> I take it you'd like to be added to this resolution? Yes, please. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. The Duke? Yes. Emo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Sassy, Sierra, Stegenga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Tortel abstention, um, Tui, Euro, Brescia, 18 eyes, one abstention, I'm sorry, 19 eyes, one abstention, and one absent. I didn't realize, but Lucy Joyce is a seasoned um, foster parent as well. Uh, did you want to say a couple words, Lucy, or no, about that? Your experience? You, did or, I don't, I, I don't you can come up. You can come up when we go to the speakers after the, okay. if you want to, so you can think about it. If you want to, if you don't want to say a few words, that's okay. We recognize that you are, you've done your uh, great deed for society. My husband and I were actually um, foster parents, but it was a permanent placement. We adopted uh, two children who were born in Orange County. I kind of got teary-eyed and I had to jump up and give standing ovations because we dealt with some emotional health issues, but I can't fathom the kind of care that uh, Orange County families are providing to the most vulnerable. And um, it's really great and you have wonderful staff. Professionally, we work closely. It's partly why I'm so uh, personal to the Relatives as Parents program, because it's sort of a lot of the same situation and scenarios, but uh, yeah, it's, um, it's powerful. Maybe we need to do respite care. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. Okay, on to number four. Legislators Kulasek Emo, a resolution approving the consolidation of New York State Vital Statistics Registration Districts 3560 and 3526 into one district pursuant to Section 4120 of the Public Health Law. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell, Sassy, Sierra, Stegenga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, number five. Legislators Fagione, Amo, Vero, Cheney, Benelli, Hines, Kulasek, Paduk. Home Rule Resolution of the Orange County Legislature in support of Assembly Bill A-2079, seeking to amend New York State Agriculture and Markets Law, Section 286, to provide that Cornell Cooperative Extension Orange County be eligible to qualify for state funding reimbursements and grant programs for the promotion of agriculture and domestic arts. Discussion? Uh, Legislator Luan? Added? Okay. Uh, Janet? Added? Right. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Sierra? Added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines, Kulasek, Lujan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Sassy, Sierra, Stegenga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Tui, Bureau, Brescia. 19 eyes, one abstention. Okay. Gotcha. okay, number six. Legislators Cheney, Amo, and Hines. Resolution to apply for, accept, appropriate, and implement a federal transit administration grant, the matching New York State Transit Grant, and a local county match for the Orange County Department of Planning, pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Okay, okay discussion, Fagione added. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Sassy, Sierra, Stegenga, Sutherland, Tortel, 
Tui, Biro, Brescia. 20 ayes. And number seven. Yes, Legislator Luhan. Add, you want to be added to number six, no problem. Number seven. Legislators Vero and Hines, resolution confirming the reappointment by the county executive to the Orange County Board of Ethics pursuant to Local Law 2 of 1994. Second. Discussion? Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Emo? Yes. And Agnesakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Luhan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Biro, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay. AA8, receiving file. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go ahead. Just in regards uh, to appointments such as that with new legislators, it'd be nice to have their, their resume included with the packets so that if there are any questions, they could bring them up. Okay. I think we try to do that usually. Yeah. It was a reappointment, though, but still, I know you, yeah. Yeah. That's no, okay. All right. When I get reappointed to the IDA, I have to submit one, too, I guess. I had to polish off the dust and everything. Go ahead. All Republicans added? Sure. Okay. I'm not making light of that, Mike. I'm sorry. And quite frankly, I think that we did have it in committee. Okay. Bio was attached. At rules. Did you open up your packet, Mike? All right. I'm just busting your chops. <laughs> no problem. But it, that's good. It was there, though. It was in rules. Okay. Righty. But even if you know, just as a reminder to have them. Okay. Okay. A A eight um, receiving file. A eight receiving file. And Katie, did you have a something you I just wanted to add? Okay. Sorry. Okay. Number eight. Legislator Benton, resolution accepting and confirming the report of the apportionment of the mortgage tax for the period October 1st, 2018 through March 31st, 2019, as computed from statement filed by the county clerk. Discussion. Roll call. Benelli. Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 20 ayes. Okay, number nine. Legislators Benton and Sutherland. Resolution reviewing and affirming the Orange County Debt Management Policy. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 20 ayes. Okay, number 10. Legislators Benton and Anagnostakis, resolution amending and reaffirming the Orange County investment policy pursuant to Article 3, Section 3.02D of the Orange County Charter and Section 39 of the New York State General and Municipal Law. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Low talk to added, excuse me. Roll call. Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, 11 through 14. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek, Luhan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, number 15, bond, amending a bond, uh, two thirds vote. Legislators Benton and Sutherland. Amending bond resolution dated May 2nd, 2019. Amending the bond resolution adopted September 1st, 2016. 
and amended September 6, 2018 and April 5, 2019 in relation to the replacement of the county-owned Otisville Viaduct in the village of Otisville. Second. Fagione added. Okay. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell, Sassy, Sierra, Steganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, number 16. Legislators Ruskevich, Kulisek, Cheney, Menuda, Benton. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2019 county budget for the Orange County Soil and Water Conservation District pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Okay, discussion? Yes. Added, Totel added, Sierra added, Steganga, Lujan added, Vero added, Sutherland added. Okay, no discussion, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Sassy? Sierra? Steganga? Sutherland? Hotel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 eyes. Okay, this is the one I confused with number three, and I just have to say that I read in the Times Show. Thank everybody for voting for that, by the way. Yesterday I read in the Times Show record. Let me just read you this little paragraph. It says, the U.S. Department of Agriculture's latest five-year census released on April 11th found New York lost farms at three times, three times the national average between 2012 and 17, 9% versus 3%. The number of dairy farms declined 20% alone. I know I lost one in my district last year out of about the five that I have, and I, I know quite a few of you have others. And, and Paul is up there fighting for the, the, uh, the non-overtime for farmers, which is really going to cripple farmers in Orange County and, and throughout the state if it passes. Um, you know, it's, uh, I understand fighting for workers' rights, but um, we really have to do all we can for the farmers, whether it's vegetable growers or dairy farmers or whatever kind of farmers we have in Orange County. Thank you again for that vote. Number 17. Legislators Amo, O'Donnell, Benton, Hines. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2018 county budget for the Valley View Center for Nursing Care and Rehabilitation pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Okay, discussion. Legislator Nagnostakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just uh, want to ask my uh, fellow legislators to have an open mind on this, the ones that voted no in committee and the ones that have made any kind of promises in caucus, just have an open mind. Um, in the five-year struggle to save Valley View, the ones that have been here know that I usually start my uh, presentation with a quote, uh, maybe from Abraham Lincoln or Churchill or FDR, Kennedy, Reagan. I don't think any of those apply today. Instead, I want to quote Willie Sutton. When they asked Willie Sutton why he robs banks, he said, because that's where the money is. And make no mistake about it, the reason we're doing this today is because that's where the money is, at Valley View. So the Maximus report that everyone's talking about is this report right here, which I don't think is being used correctly. Every county in New York State does a similar report, and the purpose of the report is basically to figure out the allocation of time and the benefits associated with those, that time of the workers that are spending on a particular department so they can put that in to maximize their grant money that they receive from the federal government. Again, let me be clear. It's the time of our employees and their benefits that is allocated towards a department's costs that are put into the federal government to get back a maximum amount of grant money. It is not to bill one department to get money out of them. As far as, well, we know that in Orange County, the only department this is being done to is Valley View. And as far as I can tell, in all of New York State, every county does a similar report. There is no other nursing home that is being billed for services the way Valley View is. Now, I think Mr. Sussman correctly stated that it's been litigated, and if you read your Orange County Charter that I'm holding right here, Valley View is a department like every other department 
And if you read the charter, it'll tell you what each department we have, its duties. And so I don't read in there, for example, that the IT department, what I do read is that the IT department is supposed to pro provide those services to other departments of Orange County. I don't read in there that IT will provide those services to other departments in Orange County, except for Valley View, which we will bill. <laughs> so some people may argue that Valley View is a little different. Valley View is an enterprise fund, maybe, and so that's the justification that we can do this. Well, I think the interpretation of an enterprise fund may not quite be understood. It's actually the reason you can't do this. All right, we have other enterprise funds in Orange County. We have the county airport. We have the community college. You don't see this being done to any other department, including those enterprise funds. As a matter of fact, I remember about a year and a half ago, I think, in Ways and Means. I sat on the Ways and Means Committee. And we had the Commissioner of General Services, and we had the Community College in front of us, and there was some issue where maybe he can uh, help them procure products at a cheaper cost. And he says, of course I'll give them my time and energy. Of course I'll do a great job to save money for the Community College. He didn't say, but I'll bill you for my time and my employees' times and our benefits also to get it back from the Community College. Some other people might argue that, well, I. IGT money is involved here. Valley View is a little different. It has IGT money coming to it. And they'd be right. Some people would argue that huge surplus that's been billed in Valley View is on the back of IGT money. A lot of it is. Correct. To get IGT money, the county makes a commitment. It says we will put up a certain amount of money and the federal government will match it 100%. For example, if the IGT was $8 million to be received for Valley View this year, we would put up $4 million, get 100% match by the federal government, and Valley View would get $8 million. That's a commitment made by the county. That's a covenant by the county. It says we're giving that money to Valley View, and we expect 100% match. That money goes to Valley View by law. Cannot be taken back by the county. Cannot be used anywhere in the county, only at Valley View. So I think what we're doing here is highly questionable. Now, before we take our vote, I'll remind you that some legislators on this panel sat here through five years of struggles. And I know privately you've told me, listen, I've made some bad mistakes. I've made, made bad votes, but I was fooled. I was deceived. That's why I made those bad votes. Well, don't be fooled and deceived this time. And I know some of the new legislators have told me I would have never made those votes. I can't be fooled and deceived that way. Well, stick with Valley View on this one. Stick with the seniors and the veterans in Valley View. I, for one, will not be a latter-day Willie Sutton. I ask you not to be one either and vote against this. And let's also get rid of this in the budget going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I concur with my fellow legislator, uh, Anagostakis, and the comments that were made here in the chamber today. Uh, most of what I had prepared to say has been said, but I feel that some of it needs bearing repeating. As legislator Anagostakis has said, the IGT funding is for Valley View. The Valley View funds, any profits they make, are for Valley View, and they're not to be commingled with any other county funding. No other department that I have looked at back and forth between the Maximus report and the budget is being charged back at this rate. I feel that we are rating the Valley View funds simply for the purpose that we might have found a loophole. The golf course, the airport, places that are playgrounds basically have no, we have an airport with Stewart. I don't see that our airport contributes to, you know, mass transportation. They're playgrounds, but we're not rating them for any funds based on the Maximus report, which the purpose is, as Legislator Gernagasak has said, to fund, to get funds and enhance our grant, federal grant funds. It's not for the purposes of charging other departments back. I have serious misgivings about the legality of this, and I have contacted the New York State Comptroller's Office and am awaiting an opinion on this resolution. 
I also feel this resolution and the additional 1.5 plus million in the 2019 budget is des designated and designed to systematically bankrupt Valley View once again, preying on those whom we should be protecting. Thank you. Okay. Uh, caucus Leader Amo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and Mr. Nagustakis, I think, gave us a good lesson on the issues behind the Maximus. I certainly applaud him for that. I think he was, he was correct in, in, in outlining it as far as I understand it. I think that the one difference that we have to understand in trying to compare the other apples and oranges and other departments is that Valley View gets a rate for reimbursement from the state, the federal government through Medicaid and other programs. And that rate is above my head oftentimes trying to figure it out, but it really is very complex. And it takes into account the money that Valley View spends that then builds on their rate. So as they put this money forward, their rate goes up. So if they put money out, that can be built into the rate, and that rate may stay for five or whatever number of years forward. I'm understanding to be that's the case. Now, if that's the case, then we're really benefiting from it. That may be the only difference that somebody else can do it. I think that's the way it is, or at least close to the way it is. I think also we got to remember we, we throw in what IGT money is. And I think if most of us probably know that, but if you don't, just quickly, IGT is, is a federal subsidy that recognizes county facilities cannot operate at the same level that non-county facilities can, namely the mean of expenses. So that amount above that, they try to subsidize to keep us competitive. And Mr. Anagostakis is correct. Correct. We have to pay as a county out of all our taxpayer dollars 50% of that to get that. So it, it's very complex, and so I, I don't see that as a big problem. Certainly, if if if, if Mr. Patel is correct and and there is some illegality in this, then we certainly don't want to do it. But I don't understand it that way, and I'm going to support this resolution. Okay, um, I was a little confused on the resolution. I'm sorry, Jimmy, you want to say something? Sure. Okay, so I supported this in the committee. We brought it to the committee. Uh, the IGT money, I have a little different version than my colleague to my right. Uh, the federal government gives us the money and social services has to donate back to the state, insist that they get half the money back. So this 55 million or now 50 million that's in the enterprise fund, uh, actually 50 million from social services got sent to the state to get us the $50 million in that fund. So the $1.5862 added to their budget. I'm not happy about that. Uh, we're working very hard. I know the chairman's gonna announce this month uh, that we're forming a committee to create a uh, health campus up at Valley View. And uh, I won't name uh, who's on a committee, that's the chairman's uh, prerogative who's gonna serve that uh, committee. But one thing I, I will not continue to hear is uh, from people that look at life that the glass is half empty and live in misery and try to enhance that misery onto other people and use our seniors and put the fear of God into them. Uh, we have made it clear over and over and over again that we will never sell Valley View and we never will. This committee that's being formed will ensure that Valley View will last forever, all right? Um, I'm not happy with this 1.5. I thought the county exec's office was gonna speak on it today. Um, so I'll wait to hear if they do speak. Yeah, when I saw you, ready to speak. I was ready to call up uh, Acting County Exec Harry Porter just to give us a little insight on this if you could. Um, the rationale that um, some of the things that we used to do this in the past, it's not unprecedented. Uh, years ago we used to used to assess, um, we don't have very many um, enterprise funds. So if you could just say a few words Harry, I'd appreciate it. Okay, is this on? It is on, all right. First I'd ask the question and if you had to guess who went to Harvard Law School, was it Mike Sussman or Mr. Agnagostakis? I would have said Mike Agnagostakis. It was very eloquent. Uh, but I just wanted to say that we're not here to fool or deceive anybody. We're here to do the business of county government. Uh, as you know, and also just to underline what Mr. O'Donnell just said, 
We're not going to sell, we're not going to close Valley View ever. So disperse all that kind of discussion because it's just, just not part of the plan. It's not going to happen. We are not going to sell, we are not going to close Valley View. That is from the county executive directly. I spoke to him about this today, anticipating this discussion. So what's happened? What's happened is uh, we are now reverting back to things that we used to do in the past. Uh, when Valley View was uh, more fiscally solid, uh, we had this allocation program in place, and we actually charged back county services to the hospital and they reimbursed the county. The uh, Valley View Hospital through the years uh, went south financially, management-wise, and uh, there was no money, as Mr. Willie Sutton might say, uh, there was no money there to be had. So we discontinued the, uh, the allocation of costs uh, for the county to, uh, providing to the hospital. Uh, over the last few years, and I would say through my, my county executive's leadership and the work that uh, Lawrence Ledoux and, and Donna have done, we've brought professional management to that hospital. It's running better now than it ever has, at least in my knowledge. And my knowledge goes back for quite a few years, decades. And um, what we are now doing is we're imposing back what we have done in the past. Because of the now financial viability of the hospital, there is an ability to charge the costs that are legitimately made by Valley View using county services. And just in terms of reference, in terms of legality and all the rest, as a former city manager in Newburgh, we did the exact same thing with our water fund and with our sewer fund. We did the exact same thing with our city manager in Long Beach. We, we charged back the cost of the city government to provide for payroll, to provide for legal, to provide for all of those things that the water and the sewer funds needed in those two municipalities. So this is not something new. It's not something groundbreaking. There is no uh, conspiracy theory that we're going to drain down the revenues of the, of the hospital. When the hospital didn't have money, the county provided it. The, county, the hospital now has more revenues available, so we're going back to where we used to be. Thank you, Harry. Okay, Appreciate great. it. Great. Legislator Hines. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, too, want to quell the uh, concerns of everybody. Uh, when the speaker said that the residents of Valley View were uh, upset about uh, some of this money, that, that's concerning to me as well, because this legislature has made a firm commitment to everybody at Valley View. Uh, as a matter of fact, every almost every month at the Ways and Means Committee, uh, which I sit on, Mr. Ledoux and Ms. Strecker come to us with projects to enhance Valley View. We have improved more projects at Valley View to, to help that facility to make it better, uh, enhancing the employee areas, enhancing the, uh, the patient areas, uh, making it better for the families. Uh, so that money has uh, been approved. And, and at, at Ways and Means Committee, I specifically asked Mr. Ledoux, and he provided the information, how much of that money is encumbered because we approved so many projects last year and we continue to approve so many projects this year because at some point in time we may want to stop hitting that enterprise fund. And that was exactly the question I asked and those were the figures that were given back to us that there's still, even after all these ex 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 uh, expenses, because some of the money hasn't moved. It takes a while for us to do projects. It doesn't happen overnight. So we approve the project. The money doesn't move until it's done or budgeted. So uh, the ventilation system is another huge project that's about to start just to make the place better. So when people say that we're rating the fund to sell it nonsense. We're, re we're using the money to enhance the facility. And uh, the, the next issue I have is since we're being accused of doing something illegal, I would please uh, ask to go into executive session so we can confer with County Attorney Chapman and Legislative Council Reed as an entire legislature. Because nobody accused us of doing anything legal in committee, and I would like to hear from them. I think we all should hear it just to make sure that we're uh, doing something that is in fact legal. So I would move to go into executive session, please. Second. Okay, second. Okay, under section F, the open means law, I believe. No, I'm 105, I'm sorry. Okay, motion, second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, we'll convene in the, uh, the committee, statutory committee meeting room. Okay, we are back in session. Is there any one legislator that wants to speak on this issue that hasn't spoken already? Okay, then I'll be the, f yes, let's make it concise because you spoke already. Okay, go ahead. I'll be concise. I'll make two quick points. Um, first of all, when people claim that other departments are charged in the budget, 
Yeah, they're charged for various items, but no department other than Valley View is charged for the costs in this Maximus plan. None. And the second point I'll make is, I respect everyone working for Orange County. However, no one can be 100% wrong all the time, except for county attorneys on the issue of Valley View. They've been wrong 100% of the time during the five-year fight to save Valley View. So I don't know if this is legal. I don't know if it's not legal, but it shouldn't be done. Thank you. Thank you. I just have to say on this matter that uh, there's been some things out there said at Valley View and to the seniors and to the veterans, and I, I just think they're irresponsible and shameful at the very least. Um, there is no intent to sell Valley View whatsoever. And even if we have to subsidize Valley to a certain extent, there's gonna be no intent to sell Valley View. All legislators here have put their money where their mouths is, are, excuse me, with respect to all the capital improvements that we've approved over the last three or four years. Um, I, I, it is my intent to uh, form a committee, as Legislator O'Donnell said, and Lawrence Ledoux will be sitting on that committee, and I also plan to appoint, or have the legislature appoint, an employee, CSEA employee from Valley View. And that's for the real property at Valley View, which has also been stated that we're, we're, it's a ploy to, to uh, put Valley View out of business, which is a bunch of crap. And I get sick of hearing it, I really do. I mean, it's shameful for any legislator, and I don't want any legislator telling anybody that it's a ploy to, to bankrupt Valley View, because that's just an asinine statement, completely asinine. There is no intent here, and, and a speaker at the beginning of the meeting said that the 2019 budget wasn't passed. Well, we wouldn't be sitting here if it weren't passed. I mean, that's just a, a, a crazy statement, too. So uh, the, the county exec did make us aware, an executive, and once the door opened, I had him say it again, so I'm not sharing what was said in the executive session, that Valley View also used to put into the general fund the interest that was accrued on funds for Valley View, and now that is put in the Valley View accounts. Correct, Harry? Thank you. So that, that's uh, just shy of $600,000 um, that wasn't put in that account in the past. So I encourage legislators to vote for this. We're not doing anything different than was done years ago. Thank you. Roll call. Finelli? Yes. Paduk? No. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? No. Benton? Yes. Cheney? Yes. Fagione? Yes. Hines? Kulasek? No. Luhan? No. Minuta? Absolutely. O'Donnell? No. Sassy? Sierra? No. Steganga? Yes. Sutherland? Yes. Tortell? No. Tui? Yes. Vero? Yes. Brescia? Yes. 13 ayes, 7 noes. Okay, thank you. Uh, number 18. Legislators Amo, Totel, Benton, and Minuta. Bond resolution dated May 2nd, 2019. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the preparation of surveys, preliminary and detailed plans, specifications, and estimates necessary for the construction of a new medical examiner's facility, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 26,500, appropriating set amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 26,500 bonds of the county to pay the cost thereof. Discussion? Two we added. Benelli added, Kulisek, Vero, Chini, Lujan, Stegenga, Minuta. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Chini? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Sassy? Sierra? Stegenga? Sutherland? Tautel? Tui, Vero, Brescia, 20 eyes. Okay, 19 through 21. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes, and can I have all Dems added to all three of those? Certainly, things? thank you. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Luhan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Sassy, Sierra, Steganga, Sutherland, Tartel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 eyes. Okay, number 22. 
Legislators O'Donnell, Amo, and Agnostakis, Sutherland, Tautel. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature recognizing National Skilled Nursing Care Week, May 12, 2019 through May 18, 2019. Second. Question? Please All end. Republicans? Okay. Janet? Yes, certainly. Okay. All Dems, too. And Michael? He's on it. Okay. Oh, he's around there. I'm sorry. I didn't look down. Okay. Go ahead, Janet. Um, I just want to encourage my fellow legislators to stop by when you, if you have a moment next week um, to Valley View during their skilled nursing care week. The things um, that they do with, um, you know, some of the residents are really terrific and just to, you know, stop by and show your support to them, for them. Okay, Legislator Tui. Just to add to uh, Legislator Sutherland's comments, I think that the, the, um, they kick it off on May 10th, I think, 10th, 9th or 10th, but check it out. Um, and at 2.15, they have opening uh, ceremonies with the nurses in the town hall portion. So again, anybody that can make it, be great. Okay, thank you. Legislator Totel. It's actually the week of May 6th is National Skilled Nursing Week. And as you said, it's going to, uh, they're going to have the kickoff. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for the. Yeah, it's uh, every all the legislators should have gotten a letter on that, and you can RSVP. Yeah, for that. I apologize. It was yeah, this is skilled nursing nursing care week, but yeah. Okay, no problem. Okay, roll call. Benelli. Yes. Paduk. Yes. Amo. Yes. And Agnostakis. Benton. Cheney. Vagione. Hines. Kulasek. Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Sassi, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Bureau, Brescia. 20 ayes. 23. Legislators O'Donnell, Emo, and Agnostakis, Sutherland, Totel. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature recognizing May 2019 as Lyme Disease Awareness Month. Second. Okay, all Republicans? Okay. All Dems? Okay. All Independents? Okay. Uh, discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, number 24. Legislators Taganga, Benton, Totel, and Sutherland. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create a groundskeeper at Orange County Department of Residential Health Care Services pursuant to Section 2.02I of the Orange County Charter. Okay. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Biro, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay. Number 25. Legislators Fagione, Staganga, and Lujan. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reallocate, reclassify, abolish, and create various positions in the Orange County District Attorney's Office pursuant to Section 2.02I of the Orange County Charter. Add Biro. Okay. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Vagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Totel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 20 ayes. Okay, number 26. Legislators Lujan, Staganga, Amo, and Kulasek. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reclassify assistant county attorney at the Orange County, I'm sorry, at the Orange County Attorney's Office pursuant to section 2.02I of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Sassy? Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, number 27. Legislators Lujan, Staganga, Amo, and Cheney. 
an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create an intern seasonal at the Orange County Planning Department pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion, Pagione added. Discussion, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, number 28. Legislators Ruskevich, Stiganga, Benton, and Benelli. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create one assessor at the Orange County Department of Finance Division of Real Property Tax Service Agency pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Amo added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Sassy? Sierra? Stiganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 20 ayes. Okay, number 29. Legislators Lujan, Tortell, and Stiganga, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to abolish rehabilitation planner and create the position of community development project manager at the Orange County Department of Community Development pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Chairman, please add me. Add Republicans. Okay, you're added, Peter. All right. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, last speaker has been paid, waiting patiently, Ron Animal Hughes, my friend. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for recognizing me to the floor. Honorable members, <clears throat> I have three things I'd like you to take a look at for the future. We're not allowed to use reservoirs anymore, and we own a lot of them. Should we be looking to the future for aquaculture in this county and promote it through the Agricultural Department, 4-H, and other amenities that support that kind of a green effort? There's huge properties, and even if they're raising bait fish, if it's, the food, if it's not edible, because of contamination or other factors that may exist in these reservoirs, it's something to look at. Another thing we need to look at is recently in the town in the Windsor, they clear cut 40 acres and installed solar panels over the entire 40 acres adjacent to the New York City aqueduct on Riley Road. There were no papers to the county. There were no references made. There was no one that was made aware of this thing. The panels are in place. There's a gate around the property and no one's the wiser. The third thing is, is our wholly exempt and tax-free entities that operate in our county and every municipality need to be in districts that are created by this legislative body in conjunction with the municipalities. So if you're going to have a tax-exempt property, you have it out in the middle of nowhere where they can enjoy that and they don't take a half a million dollars a year away from properties at Broadway and 42nd Street like they've done in the town of Newburgh. Everywhere you turned around, they sold hotels and motels and in one year wiped a million dollars off the tax base. The other thing is that your IDA is running wild. They calculate the number of jobs, including the construction jobs, and add them to the jobs that are going to be there permanently, and they warp the figures on everything. They give out monies. They allow exemptions, sales tax, all of this other stuff, that stuff does not evaporate. We split that money that they don't pay amongst the taxpayers. And if it's the municipality or the county, it's not fair. This stuff has got to stop. Now, my taxes are the equivalent of a mortgage at this point. Now, I know I'm old and all that, and I've been around a long time, but my taxes shouldn't be what they are per month in the same place that I've lived for 35 years. This is all going screwy. Now, notification, 239 reference, 
home rule, if somebody takes out a ruler or a scale and says, well, we're not within 500 feet, we don't have to notify you? Really? The county should insist to take control of where these solar panel things are going to be to contribute to the county and to amenities within this county and not for profit groups from Connecticut LLCs that come in and clear cut and cover 40 acres at a time without us having anything to say about it. We've got tax base that's disappearing. We've got an IDA that's running wild that needs to be reeled in. And we need to take a look at promoting agriculture and taking control of the properties that we have left over with the inventory we have is all we have to work with. Thanks for listening to what I have to say. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Opposed? Carried.